Okay, guys, welcome to Asylum Insights. Thank you for being here. I'm going to be talking about predictive analytics and the future of social media and digital marketing in general. Um, this is basically what we're trying to do at the agency and what we try to pretty much do with SmartBeam as well. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, so let's get well. Let's get let's get rolling. So, guys, basically, digital made everything measurable. You know, marketing wasn't measurable before the internet, internet came in and technology came in, and that was amazing because. Um, we were, you know, it was a great sales pitch to go on and sell our product and what we do um, to our clients. They loved the fact that they could measure everything. But now, you know, digital, they became a, a constant transformation, constant transformation in the sense of um, new metrics coming in, new technologies. People measure pr things pretty much in a different way. You can Google or go try to find um, engagement rates, uh, reach rates. Uh, you know, algorithms of distribution, edge ranks, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of um, different ways of saying things in a digital landscape. So we're not basically speaking the same language anymore. So, you know, what's happening is that we just cannot agree what success is. If you talk to other agencies, publishers, mediums, technology uh, companies, they, they all uh, find success in different, different things. So that to me is a big, big problem we're having these days because we're not uh, ruled by the same KPIs anymore. And, and so it's making our life, our lives pretty difficult. Um, and you know, I think the problem is that we focus on, on numbers and we're not focused on the cost anymore. And uh, we just have to remember that numbers are the consequence to something. So my first um, message here is let's try to focus on the cost for those numbers and not only the numbers themselves, so, but you know, how we're causing those, causing those numbers. So uh, here's, a, here's a question with that, do we want to, uh, you know, measure or find numbers or want to measure behavior or identify behavior? And I think the, the answer is really, it's really simple. We want to identify behavior and find patterns in behavior rather than numbers. Um, so how do we measure qualitative behavior? And that's the big question when it comes to, to measuring, you know, um, social media content and so on and so forth. And there is just one key, which is attribution. And I'm going to be talking about that in a bit. So big data, according to Google, is basically a bunch of data. Uh, with patterns that we see over audiences and, and, and communities, if you will. Um, so everyone's talking about big data. I think we're in the times of, the, of big data. But the reality is that we don't really know what to do with that data. And I think that that's a big problem because we can measure everything, but we cannot really, we don't really know how to, what to do with it. Um, so what's the right method to find those patterns that we've been talking about? Um, the thing is that we're not looking for them. If the client is happy or the boss is happy or we're reaching the number objective, or the numeric objective, if we, if we have an objective of X or Y visitors or X or Y likes or comments or whatever, then we're happy with it. And, and if we don't, we just pay to get there. And that's what digital became, you know. So what's happening in digital marketing in 2015? Well, I'm missing a zero there. We're data rich and we're insights poor. We have a lot of data, we don't have insights. We don't know what to do with it but we do have a lot of data coming in and out every second from everything we do. So I'm gonna be talking about predictive analytics um, and how to solve these issues that we've been talking about. So what I'm trying to bring to the table here is the concept of intelligent data versus big data. To me, big data is basically that data and patterns, and intelligent data is adding actions over those patterns. And we've been always talking about that, and metrics analysis action. And uh, my, my second big message here is here, it's uh, how do we add actions to the, those patterns um, just rather than um, identifying a lot of data that we don't know what to do with it. And this is not only for social media, this is a lot for media lies, for um, you know, website behavior when we have downstairs and we have visitors and sources and so on and so forth. So let's try to take action over that because if we really pay attention to what's happening, we're going to be, um, you know, be, be able to take action over, over what we've seen. So how do we find valuable patterns? And the key to what we do and what, what I'm proposing here when, in, in this talk um, is mathematical attribution. It's very simple. It's, it's actually simpler than it sounds. So the key is to add a qualitative, uh, add a quantitative value to a qualitative measure, um, which is, you know, basically something that big, comes with uh, behavioral things that you cannot measure. So you add a number to it by attribution and then you put in a formula and you have you find amazing things. So pretty much the formula for a pattern is something that is a numeric value. 
something that you can measure, likes, comments, shares, visitors, new likes, engagement rates, whatever, and then a behavioral metric with a mathematical va value, so it's attribution, you can attribute one, two, three points, whatever you need, over time. Time is really, really important because if you understand when is this happening and how often it's happening and how the patterns are happening in functioning time, it's gonna be amazing. So to find patterns, you just need to mix quantitative data with qualitative data by attributing a value, just, just testing values over time and you will, you will see it happening. It's just mathematics, it's very simple. So I think we have two options. We, we either go with the existing metrics that everyone just kind of, nobody can agree with in, in what's right or wrong, or we can create a metric. And I think the metrics revolution is when you actually create a metric, you know? Based on what your objectives are, your touch points are, your audiences are, your tribes, your messages, all the values that you have around, just create a metric by, by testing and, and, you know, attributing mathematical values to whatever doesn't have a value, a number. So I have four examples for you guys, you already know this. So the first one is the social voice of a brand. This is what exactly what I'm trying to explain. So we have content pillars and we're attributing a value, percentage and distribution. Content pillar A, B, C, and D, 30% each of the three main ones and 10% the last one. That means that if we have 10 tweets a day, we will do three, 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 and one. Over a time frame of a week or two weeks or whatever we want, whenever, whatever gives us 7% or up, in engagement is what we call the social voice of a brand. So let's say that if content pillar B is giving us a crazy engagement, so we wouldn't be doing three, 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 and one, but maybe five, two, two, and one. And we reassign mathematically the values to distribution. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, behavioral data, adding mathematical numbers to it. This is a good example, and it works really well for a content optimization strategy at Asylum. The second one is dynamic, the dynamic weighting system we create for Smart Beam, which is basically mixing uh, message, format, and timing. And then, you know, these things, they don't have a mathematical value. Formats, they don't have a mathematical value. You either have video, text, or images. And then the platforms, or the hours of the day, they don't have a mathematical value. What we did with, you know, the Smart Beam formula was mixing those formats, uh, formats, messages, and timing, and then finding based on response, what's, what, you know, what's the right time to post and what kind of content to post. And that's another good example of, of attribu attributing numbers to something that does, don't have a, a, a value. Example three is the scoring metric we created for, we created for Smart Beamo, which is likes, comments, and shares. They don't have a number. They don't have a mathematical attribution to it. But then we created a, a scoring system where getting shares is more valuable, of course. So same for Twitter as well. So likes equals one point, comments three, shares seven, for example. So Smart Beamo identifies that you know, like that engagement and gives you a prediction based on this metric, retweets or shares in the case of Facebook and Twitter because that's the attribution formula to advocacy. So that's another example of adding, adding numbers to something that they don't have, number, right? And the fourth one, this is an example for um, viability engagement metric for video. So you know the engagement rates on, on YouTube pretty much are likes and comments as well. Also you can share the link, but that's hard to track. Um, so let's work on likes and comments on YouTube. So this viewability engagement metric basically is when you get, you, you know, you have a video, we create a media campaign for that video with three different topics. So it could be the product, a promotion, and then something lifestyle-ish, if you will. So you have the engagement rates on likes and comments, and then uh, you have the average time spent because we can measure how many seconds the person is in front of the content or if they're rejecting the content or closing it or whatever, and then over a drive. Or even over time, we can do that. So I created this example for viewability as well on, on video because now we can do a lot of, um, we can understand when people are bouncing off or skipping ads. And this would work really, really well for video. That's another example. <clears throat> you know how Smart Vimo looks like, and, and this is a good example of predictive analytics based on behavior and things that they don't have a value, but we created attribution formulas and now we can actually predict when is the best message format and timing to post which is I think is the future of social media and the future of digital marketing and we're already seeing it in programmatic media we're already seeing it in um, you know in this tool as well when we can uh, and actually Facebook is starting to monitor and, and Twitter as well with tools like social bro and so on when is the best time to post but um, what we're trying to do here is also attributing content pillars
and also the formats because it does make a difference when you post an image versus a plain text on Twitter or a video versus an image on Instagram and so on. So, um, Guys, predicting is better than guessing. In content marketing, what we try to do, everyone guesses. Everyone is trying to guess when to do what and they don't even, they're not even aware that they're guessing. They're just posting content whenever they have time for it or whenever people are more connected. But guess what? We have Subway and we have Kingston Technologies. Um, Facebook tells you that from 1 to 3 p.m. it's amazing to post because everyone's connected. Guess what? For Kingston it doesn't work. For Kingston it's between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Why? Because the tribe is different. For Subway it works because, you know, it's, it's Caribbean and it's food and it's, you know, we're tempting people with food. But when it comes to uh, Kingston Technologies, well, they're gamers and they're designers and they're more aware and they're more receptive at night, late at night. So we're posting for those guys between 9 and 11 p.m. and it's amazing. So not necessarily when everyone's connected is when, when it's better to post. So remember, predicting is always better than guessing. And I feel that whoever started working with these attribution models are doing stuff like this is going to rule the digital, the digital world very soon. Um, remember that science and math is the only like certain accurate science in the world, in the universe. Everything else is just... Um, you know, assumptions and theories and hypotheses. Mathematics is not. It's the only science that is actually accurate and, and, and precise in the world. Um, you know, what's amazing about this is that once you can predict influential content, you can actually be able, you, you will be able to set the trend easier. You know, we're in a constant search for creativity and ideas and how we do we create a movement out of content? Well, guess what? If we're able to find out that for some brand, the content that talks about, I don't know, uh, lifestyle tools being healthy on Mondays, it's better, you know, received um, in a video format where we can send a trend. We can set a trend easier with that data rather than just throwing out all the content whenever we feel it's right and then waiting for someone to buy it and create a big trend. So I think that once you're able to predict content, you're going to be able to set data uh, trends easier. Remember that the essentials is that, again, our, what we believe in is that the mix between message format and timing, that's for everything. When we do media, when we do content marketing, when we do websites, whatever we do, that's the right, right formula. And uh, I will always say this, you, we have to try to be useful, entertaining, and informative. One of them, three of them, two of them. Whatever we say as a brand or as a person, they have, it has to be some of these, at least one of those. If we're not being any of these, it's just useless content. So it's really, really important. Um, Smart Bingo team, um, remember just to visit smartbingo.com. Thank you.